Hello, this is Tim Congdon. Uh, I'm chairman of the Institute of International Monetary Research at the University of Buckingham. Uh, it's April 2021, and this is the latest commentary on the monetary situation. Often I talk about developments all around the world, or the United States, or in China, or something. This time I want to focus on Britain, which is my own country. There is increasing concern about rapid money growth and the possible inflation sequel to that. I'm a member of something called the Shadow Monetary Policy Committee, and uh, on the 20th of April, a letter from ten of us appeared in the Financial Times with a warning about um, the Bank of England uh, buying too many assets, pushing up money growth excessively, and that uh, um, warning about uh, inflation risks in the next two or three years. And what I want to do today is to um, develop this sort of, if you like, case for the prosecution um, that we're going to have above target inflation uh, and bring it and illustrate it well into pieces of, of evidence. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about inflation in Britain uh, in the last few decades. We had in the post-war period, a number of rising, um, rising inflation over the decades, uh, so that in the 70s and 80s, inflation was often in the double digits, and it was a very major social and political problem. In fact, the highest figure for the increase in the retail price index was in the year to August 1975, uh, and it was no less than 26.9%. Obviously, this caused concern, and um, bit by bit, steps were taken to bring the situation under control. Uh, big debates about monetary, monetary control and that kind of thing. But beginning in uh, late 1992, a system of inflation targets was introduced. And um, this system worked. Uh, initially, the target was expressed in terms of the retail price index. Uh, retail price index was to be limited to an increase of between 1 and 4 percent and was to come down to the lower numbers in that band by the end of the then government, which was 1992-1997. The uh, bank being that had its independence. Uh, 2003, there was a change in the way that the target was expressed. So it was in terms of the consumer price index, not the retail price index. The target became 2%, with a kind of permitted band between 1% and 3%. This chart shows what happened in the 21st century to British inflation. And you can see that, for the most part, it's between those 1% and 3% bands. The average inflation rate since December 2003 has, in fact, been 2.1%. So practically perfect in terms of meeting the target. But as you can see, with one or two breaches of the target, both upwards and downwards, in the period since the end of 2003. And I want to talk about those a bit now. Um, and um, we'll um, bring in now the importance of money to what happens to inflation. You can see that the two upward breaches were in 2008 and 2010, period beneath target in 2014-15, tied up actually with the drop in oil prices. The two periods when inflation was a little bit higher than it should have been were in 2008 and 2010. Let's then look at the behavior of money uh, and try and link up inflation developments with monetary growth. Um, here I've got a box showing over the whole period from the 1960s to today I haven't included 2020, which is affected by, the, by COVID-19, but um, over that whole period, you had an increase in the quantity of money that was about 1.5% faster than the growth of nominal national income. Uh, and uh, I think that can be explained by the, most of money is bank deposits, can be explained by the increasing competitiveness of, of banks in that period following financial liberalization, particularly in 1971. So there is a link between the growth of money and the growth of nominal GDP. 
And then let's just try and think about what happened 2008 and 2010. You can see 2005, 2006, the growth of money was over 10%, actually 9%, 10% for quite some time. Uh, and there was in fact a warning uh, from me uh, and also, by the way, other members of the Shadow Mon Monetary Policy Committee uh, in, uh, in a letter to the FT in July 2006 that money growth was too high and would lead to above target inflation, and it did. Uh, and so um, you can perhaps understand the background to my concern, our concern, that the present rate of money growth, which is over 15%, will also lead to above target inflation. Let's just think about this a little bit more. Um, there are a number of signs that money growth is excessive looking at the money data itself. In general, the behavior of households is much more stable than that of companies and financial institutions. So when we get accelerations or decelerations in money growth, it usually is picked up in more amplified movements in the uh, growth rates or the declines indeed of money holdings of companies and financial institutions, and that is exactly what we see this time. You can see the growth of money held by financial institutions accelerating early last year, and then more recently, the real big surge in money has actually been in money held by companies. So that in the year we've just been through, the increase in money holdings of companies is 30%, and the last time that was the case was actually uh, in December 1986, ahead of the boom, uh, boom years 1987, 1988, and then in, in the end inflation took off in 1990 to do a double digit figure, and I warned about that too. Perhaps I could say here that um, I've been through a number of these episodes in my career, and um, I've been, quite honestly, repeatedly right in these major inflation calls. I was right in the 1980s, in saying inflation is going to increase sharply. I was right in the early 1990s, 1992, after the devaluation of the pound, saying that devaluation wouldn't cause inflation to go up. I was right uh, after the Great Recession, when we had quantitative easing, in saying quantitative easing wouldn't cause inflation to rise. In all these episodes, I have used essentially the same theory, uh, that um, the behavior of uh, nominal national income and asset prices depends critically on the quantity of money broadly defined. So let's just try and then uh, draw some conclusions about the current episode. We've, ha we've got 15% growth of money. We've got that, I'm sure it's emphasized only in the last year. Back in 2006, we had a period of about two years when money growth was 9% or above 9% and uh, sometimes in the double digits. Um, so we haven't had money growth for such a long period in this episode. Um, let us assume that as life returns to normal with the return to work uh, after the vaccination programs and so on, let's assume that the rate of growth, of the quantity of money <clears throat> comes back down towards 4% and that we have, say, 4% money growth in 2022 and 2023. The relationship between money and nominal national income is very medium term in character. So we've got this five years, 2019 to 23, including all the five years inside that. The, on the assumption I've just made that money growth comes back under control, the average money growth in this period is bid under 7%. <clears throat> unreasonable assumptions about growth of, non of trend GDP, ratio of money to GDP. I would say this points to inflation of about 3.5% on average in that period. We've had low inflation in 2019 and 2020, uh, and also uh, it's so far in 2021, although it's changing at the moment. By implication, inflation in 22 and 23 will be kind of 3 to 6%. In the context of Above trend growth in the UK, certainly this year, early 2022, probably also as well. Also a global boom, given what's happening in the United States. 
So we arrive at this kind of plausible central view to bring <clears throat> money, nominal GDP, back into kilter over the medium term. Inflation, in, inflation numbers, uh, three to six percent in the next uh, uh, next few next year, next two or three years. Can we cross-check this with looking at asset prices? You know, if this was happening and we had a depressed stock market or a very weak housing market, that would cause me to qualify my, qualify my view or even not have that view at all. In fact, the stock market, uh, FTSE 100, has recovered from its low point last spring. The FTSE at 250 is at close to new peaks. But that isn't really out of control. It's more in America that you see at the moment stock prices running away at fantastic rates. UK housing market, there has been an increase in house prices in the last year. The housing market is active. Again, it's not booming. I think what I would say about asset prices is they're not inconsistent with uh, a rise in inflation to above target levels, even though they're not giving a very strong reading that, that there's going to be a boom and so on. What about the labor market? Well, here you've got something, in my view, is very significant, that at present companies are reporting very severe shortages, not of skilled labor, but of unskilled labor. In fact, those shortages, current reports, they're quite unprecedented. Normally, there's no difficulty in finding unskilled labor in Britain. Skilled labor is usually the constraint in output. At present, companies are saying they can't find unskilled labor. This is partly related probably to Brexit and, and uh, the, the return of some workers from Eastern Europe going, going home. But um, unskilled labor shortages are very severe. I would argue that what's happening in asset markets, labor market, is therefore consistent with inflation increasing towards above target levels in the next two or three years. Uh, and then to just wrap all this up, um, I'm pretty confident we're going to above 3%. Above, above 5% isn't so clear. You know, we've got 15.2% growth of money. It might seem to be, you know, it, it, it's, it's obvious, isn't it? Not necessarily, because the relationship is very medium term. Um, if the Bank of England does now oversee a fall in the rate of growth of money to about 3, 4, 5 percent a year, the coming increase in inflation will be a problem, but actually only for two or three years. It should come under control after that. We don't know as yet that inflation, that money growth will come back towards those kind of figures, but that would be my central expectation. Thank you.